Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Today is Sunday the 1st of December. The 1st of December? Already? Yes. 2024. And of course, I say of course because I've been doing these a little while. It's Sunday Papers. Mm. Hope you're well. Before I continue with the exciting world of me trying to find a story in the national newspapers that isn't <laughs> that isn't particularly or extremely negative, which is a difficult thing to do, but I will try. Just to let you know that I have a YouTube channel. Every time I produce a new recording I upload it as a 10 hour video and there is a dark screen after 10 seconds so you can listen to it in bed without being disturbed by the light also I have a Facebook group called Jason Newland's Boring Group which is a private group that you can join and it's a good place to ask me questions or just get to know some of the other avid listeners. It's a small group at the moment. There's currently 200 members. So if you'd like to join, please come along. And that, I do believe, is everything. So what are we looking at? How many papers have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight. Downstairs. Oh no, there's also ten. The Irish. So I've got Irish. The Irish Sunday people. Do you remember? Was it last week? And I was going through the papers, and they were the same. Not actually the same. That's ridiculous, isn't it? So what have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll see. Or shall I go through a magazine? Now I'll go through the papers. On this app, which is called Readly, it's just not. It only gives me newspapers from the UK, which is fine because that's where I live, but the other countries, it's places where we've well, got Ireland and South Africa, Germany, France, Switzerland, Sweden, India and Austria. And that's it. Why? There's more. That's more. This. This is more countries than that, isn't there? And I don't understand why there's not more, more countries. That confuses me. I mean, even if I've gone through international news, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen newspapers. Let's say if I go to Austria, one, two, three, four, five, and only one of them is for today, and oh, it's in a different language. I don't know what language it's in. And then India, there's uh, there's a few for today. One, two, three, four, five from today. All the same ones. I don't know why they've listed the same ones or the same covers. 
and I don't know what language that's in. Then there's Sweden. I don't know what, what, oh, no, no, some of the words are quite similar. This, I don't know what the, I don't know what the language that's in either. So let's have a look at France. La Tribune, Liberation, La Tribune, France Entils. France Guyane, Guyane, El Independence, La Depeche, I have to say mode after say that, Depeche mode. So again, they're all a, in a, I don't know what, I've got no idea, I don't know what language that's in. And then you've got Ireland, that looks like it's, in English. Alright, they're just basically the same newspapers as in the UK, but just with the word Irish in front of the headline. They look, in fact, it looks like it's exactly the same covers. I might be wrong. Switzerland, there's only one called NZZAM Sontag. And I don't know. No, I don't understand the words on that one either. I don't know what language that is. The joke's getting old. Okay. Um, so next I've got Germany. And. Nope. Build. Build am Sonntag. And you've got Welt am Sonntag. And then there's another one called New Zurcher Zetung Build. Then you've got local news, which is Rheinisch Post Post Sandstung Sausage. So, but don't, no, I don't understand whatever, I don't know what that language is. And you've got South Africa, South Africa. Flying block? No, it's the Daily Maverick. Oh, that's in English. Oh, okay. So that's in English. It's South African, but it's only one, only one newspaper. Click on that. See, is that today? No, it's not even today. It's yesterday. Blimey. I need to, I mean, I've been looking at ways of trying to get the the news in a different way. I mean, there's things in the news that are really, I mean, I find very interesting, but not very light-hearted <laughs> for this kind of podcast, if you know what I mean. And if you're in the UK, you'll probably... Well, to be fair, you might not know what I'm talking about because it could be any number of things. Any number of things. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, there's a certain law just kind of going through which will... which has been quite controversial. I thought this app was okay until I realised that it's very limited. So we can go through the tabloids. So it's the mail, the star, the mirror, the people. The mail, the star, mirror, the people. But then you've got the Sunday mail. Oh, but the Sunday mail, that's not. One, two, three. Daily mirror. Okay, right, here we go. So let's go to the Daily Mirror. Retro, de dead, readly retro. I don't know what that means. So the Sunday Mirror. Here we go. So let's read it. 
Sunday Mirror, Strictly Sarah's Dance Sitcom, TV Show's Greg's Hotline. Um, he's the latest celebrity to be given the focus with the newspapers for various reasons. I tell you what, I quite like. He does the the factory, doesn't he? He goes into factories and sees how things are made in that. I quite like that show. I'm not into the whole cooking. St- I'm not into any kind of cooking show, to be honest. I mean, if if you get up, it's not just Saturday, Sunday as well. I think, but on a Saturday, every morning, cookery shows. And my 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 childhood would have been so different if that was what it was like when I was a kid. Can you imagine getting up? It's like you 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 just just uh, like. Mum saying, "We got to go. We got to go shopping. Got to go shopping." Oh, but Mum, got to go shopping. No, but lasagna's being cooked today on the on the Saturday cook shop shoe show shoe show whatever it is. Oh, lasagna. Uh, no, it used to be like Scooby Doo's on the banana splits. And I won't say any more because then you realise how old I am. In case you don't know how old I am. One banana, two banana, three banana, four, five banana, six banana, seven banana more. Do 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 la 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 um, jubilant Taylor Swift simply cannot shake it off so I'm guessing that's the name of one of her songs I don't know the name of any of her songs which shows you how in touch I am with today's society um, her NFL star boyfriend Travis who will be the star of her the, the, of her, her next album no doubt Um leads his team to victory the 30 year old singer watched the Kansas City Chiefs set off at the Las Vegas why is that in an English newspaper I know it's because of her but how many of the people reading that would even know what they're talking about the Las Vegas Raiders oh yeah I know them the Kansas City Chiefs, yeah, yeah, of course. No, I don't know what that is. The number on her man's American football jersey. I think over there they just call it football. Sugar Sweet on a Celeb Show. Oh, downstairs. I think it's downstairs. It's kind of funny, actually. Because they're doing building work, I think, downstairs. Yet they've got music blaring out as well. So like, what? Choose one or the other. Just choose one, please. Choose one. Don't need both. Unless they think they're trying to drown out the, the drilling and everything with the music. Who knows? I don't know what they're doing. Sugar Sweet on Celeb Show. So Lord Alan Sugar, who is the original Apprentice bloke. Did you know that? Yep. The Apprentice was copied from us. Sugar, Alan Sugar, was the first person that said, you're fired. Or you're sacked. Or whatever, you're fired. He was the first. He did it 20 odd years ago. Yeah, 20 years ago he did it. So, um... He's not been doing it for 20 years. Blimey. In the Celebrity Apprentice spin-off, back after five years, ten famous faces will be set tasks by the businessman. When, I wonder, there was someone else that did the Apprentice in a different country, wasn't there? I think they did it around the world. It's one of those... 
I think, like Deal or No Deal, and what's that one? You Are the Weakest Link, Goodbye, that one. They're, I think they're all originated in the UK. Although we did copy some things like Wheel of Fortune. Is it Wheel of Fortune or Family Fortune? We copied those in the 80s from uh, other countries. I mean, it's copy. I'm sure they probably paid lots of money to use the format. I used to like watching The Apprentice. Like the you know one in this country, because he he was a bit of a grumpy old man, even then. And I think he's about ninety six now. And one of the blokes, his assistants, is. He had two assistants, and they were both also. Pretty elderly, they were like I guess they were. They might have all been young together when they started out. And eventually the his two assistants retired and got replaced with other people. I think one of them is uh is it the chairman of a football ground or something? Yeah. I used to like it. Anyway, I can't even bother to read the story. Starma. Sustama. Sustama. To set tough targets to fix Britain. And um, you know what? Okay, I, you know, I don't really get political. I am quite political, actually, but I don't get political on these podcasts. I'm not like political, I'm not really political, but. I do I do kind of I keep my egg in the pond as it were and I what he seen the the new government that we that started on the July the 4th or whatever day June the 4th July the 4th when they got in They, they're going, oh, it's going to be changed and blah, blah, blah. But they now seem to be doing exactly what the past government did when they got in, which is try and balance the books. And I don't think it's even possible. The books, have the books ever been balanced in the history of this country? I'm going to guess no. So I'm just thinking, hmm, he's, he's really gone out to, because the last person was uh, the Prime Minister back in 2010. And like brought in all these austerity stuff in and completely wrecked wrecked the country for quite a few years because he wanted to balance the books and he didn't all that and it didn't really make any difference it just made a lot of people including myself unemployed because I was I just started being a self-employed as a counsellor and things were going it was hard I mean it was, it was a hard job to have but things were going really well really well and I was doing I was working th- three different charities getting paid by all three charities and a little bit on the, not on the side but it's like I was self-employed so I had a couple of private clients, but not much really. But generally, my my money came in from the charities, the main one being Mind. And literally, 
overnight I went from having probably 16 clients a week with mind to four I mean I literally overnight it was like you now have to finish every client you got is now finishing if it's um once it runs out, once because we were giving them six, we had six weeks and then it was over, and they just stopped giving us any new ones until we were down to four. The other charity I worked for completely pulled the plug completely, as far as um, the work I was doing. So and that was instant. There was not even any closing. Like, yeah, we're finishing now. We haven't got the funding anymore. It was all to do with. Um, the government pulling the funding and this was going into children the children's schools I suppose all schools are children's schools aren't they but going into like little schools okay, they weren't little but they were for little people not little people I mean they were for kids junior schools or whatever you want to call it infant junior and high school it wasn't just it wasn't only infant schools and that was literally you got to bring your paperwork in by the end of the week if you want to get paid and you can't finish the client there's no that's it you can't see any more clients even though even people had only seen once couldn't see them again it wasn't just me it was everyone just like they would just stopped it couldn't believe it really mind I mean, they'd taken loads of new people on. Things were going really well, seeing lots of people. And ironically, what the government was doing was creating new clients. <laughs> it's just, it's, well, I don't think irony is the right word, probably, but ridiculously. So, and. In, in, to be fair they created me I, I ended up being a client that wasn't just them though it was uh, other stuff but so I, I remember what it's like to have they called it austerity Labour are not calling it that the new government they're just basically doing everything they can to scrape bits of money from everywhere uh, for whatever reason, I don't understand finances very well anyway, but I feel like we've been here before and I didn't enjoy it last time because it lasted for a long time. It was neither a nice time, was not a good time, nor a short time. It was a long time. Bless. Apparently, Rod Stewart's not a big fan of Greg Wallace because he criticised Rod Stewart's wife's cooking. I mean, it is a cookery show. I think she was on the cookery show. I think, I mean, I don't know. It, it's one of those things where it's a little bit like the dancing shows. You've always got someone that's rude one of the judges a little bit too rude but that almost makes it as kind of part of the fun of it I guess I don't watch shows like that really apart from The X Factor and Simon Cowell was the rude one wasn't he in the old days he's not so rude now but now he's, he's a bit more nicer but back in the old days he was horrible quite a lot of the time and that's what made the show famous Simon Cowell without him that show wouldn't have been it probably wouldn't have been it would have been popular probably but not the way it was so I guess on a on a cookery show if I was on a cooking show let's say Master Chef, I would be concerned if all of the the judges if all of them like if they didn't comment on how disgusting my food was you know if at least two of them didn't walk out like, like I'm not touching it I'm not eating that 
it looks like poo wrapped in poo like no I'm not eating that I'd have to like yeah fair enough that's a fair enough statement it's kind of weird I don't know I would have thought though that because Rod Stewart apparently he posted a message about Greg telling him off for how he spoke to his wife I don't know if it's recently or at the time I don't know I'm bored already <laughs> I don't care I mean I don't know really much about it I've not I've looked into it I've, I've, I know what I've read and what I've seen but so many people get accused of stuff and then it comes out that they didn't do what they were accused of and you know this the newspapers spend days and days and days attacking a celebrity and then they go quiet for a while and it comes out that no charge has been made and there's nothing and they they might post a little a little article on that that no charges but what are people going to remember it's it's a, it's like an old joke um Jerry Sadovich joke he said uh I'm going to say it's, it's his joke it's not mine but he said um you know I lived in a village I put fences I built fences up all the round the village dividing the houses making sure that the roads were safe and everything putting fences up and gates and that but they call me Jerry the gate maker or the fence maker no I put roads in I put roads all around we placed the roads that were there that were just dirt into concrete and tarmac and made it easier to drive you know saving people money on their wheels not getting ruined and they call me Jerry the the road layer no I even built a school, I built a school for the underprivileged and do they call me Jerry the school builder? No. I shag one sheep. That's an old, old uh, Jerry Sadowich joke from, I think that was late 80s. What's, what does shag mean, Daddy? <laughs> um, it means... Hug. I hug one sheep. Canterbury Cathedral is selling tree decorations of disgrace. What? Canterbury Cathedral is selling Christmas tree decorations of disgraced ex for just in his robes. Ah, oh dear. Hey, I... I, I the thing is, I was born in the 70s. I was raised for a part of my life by Catholic nuns in two different children's homes. I'm not surprised at anything I read about any churches or what they're up to. I just, things like that don't surprise me. And I'm just amazed that they're still able, even now, all these years, Hundred, I know so many people that have gone through that process, you know, and they're still going. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. It's amazing. In fact, you could say it's amazing grace. Our coal will keep. Okay, right. Colleen's. Colleen Rooney is in the I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. And they're saying she'll keep going to make us proud, her family. Like, it's a TV show, come on. It's a television show. Blimey. Ugh. <sighs> I 
don't know. I don't even know who's on there. I don't know anyone on I know some of the people I didn't know Colleen I didn't know what she looked like or I mean she sounds like she's from Liverpool but I didn't know I knew who she was as far as Rain Wooney Rain, Rain, Rain Wooney's wife but I don't know who she is and Is, does that maybe she's a celebrity? I don't know. I guess. I mean, she probably does things on her own. I don't know. She might. She might be a TV star. I really don't know. I've got no idea. Good luck to her anyway. She seems nice. I only watched the very first episode of it a couple of weeks ago, just out of interest because. Um, there was one person on there that I like and I wanted to see her Channel 5 was last night blasted for broadcasting a TV tribute ok I worry AI is a threat to the human race says Star Kate uh, I actually saw that interview I think it was on the news Kate Blanchett I couldn't even name a film she was in. I recognise the name. She, was it Titanic? Reveals that she fears the rise of artificial intelligence could put the human race at risk. The Australian actress insists the threat from the technology is very real as it could replace anyone. Asked if she worries about the impact AA on her job, this is a bit I remember. Kate fifty five said Ah She no, they are not they're not giving it. She it said no, but they're not including this and this. She says she wasn't worried about her herself. I mean she didn't add the fact that it's not gonna make any difference to her because she's wealthy. So and she's 55 so she's not exactly in the beginning of her career so it's not going to affect her the same way it's going to affect people just starting out but she didn't say that she didn't say in any in actual interview she did say no I'm not bothered I'm not worried for myself so in there it says I'm worried about us as a species if you record this yourself for three or four seconds your voice can be replicated and that's not true it not not it can be replicated, but not very well. I've looked into this. It's not a great system. I mean, you need a little bit more than three or four seconds to catch someone's accent, their tone, their all you know the different parts. Three or four seconds. What is that? Let's just count. Hello, I am. That's it. Hello, my name. Hello, hello. My name is... Okay, so three or four seconds you probably get hello my. Maybe part of name. My, hello, my name. That is not enough to get someone's voice. You might be able to get a, a kind of a part of a voice. So I think it's a little bit of an exaggeration. Kate's latest film is Rumours. But she said the apocalyptic comedy... Ah, oh, okay. So she's got um, she's in a, a movie that almost is to do with AI in a way. So that's probably why they were asking her that. She said the apocalyptic comedy looks like a sweet little documentary compared to what's going on in the world. I'm looking at these robots, and I can't do it in her voice. I'm looking at these robots and driverless cars, and I don't really know what's bringing what what what. That's bringing anybody," she said in a view. For t okay, well, let me explain to you, Kate. You might not know this, but things that robots can do are the things that your servants do. 
your staff, <laughs> your assistants. The average person doesn't have someone to do their washing up for them or someone to drive them around or someone to clean or all that stuff. Things that a robot can do. Dr driverless cars. Because you know when you're in the back of a car, Kate, and you're tired and you've just been working all day and you you, you know you want to go home and you're in the back of the car you can have a look when your eyes close and you, sometimes you you like maybe wake up because you're making a noise like <coughs> like that and you're snoring and you giggle and and you know the average person can't do that because they have to drive the car so not everyone's got a driver so having a driverless car might be useful for those people that have been working all day and are tired rather than driving when they're tired mm, I wonder how that could help yeah I wonder what that's bringing people nothing according to her I don't really know what that's bringing anybody it's bringing safety it's bringing maybe a little bit more time so people can have with their family so they're not cooking all the time or not doing housework or not you know having to fix the car or take the car to the garage not having to do any of that stuff because it's all a car will just come and pick you up and take you where you're going driverless cars personally I think driverless cars will only work if all cars are driverless as long as we've got humans on the road driverless it's always going to be accidents because human beings simple as that once you've got all cars are autonomous the system will work it'll either work or it'll stop working but then everything will just shut down everything will stop so it'll be a massive <laughs> a massive um, traffic jam which happens every day in every country anyway big traffic jams it's a standard thing on any motorway I imagine maybe not all but especially this country I, I just don't understand uh, what it's bringing anybody well if you come back to if you just try and remember what it used to be like maybe meet some of the the non famous super rich people and they might tell you how it might help coming home and you know having someone cleaning the windows having a, a robot do it rather than having to climb up a ladder on a windy day and risk serious injury because a robot can do it or you might have windows that are self cleaning a bit like bums because bums are self-cleaning, aren't they? You know, bottoms. That's what I heard once, and I'm going to believe it. I think the AI... I, yeah, of course it's going to have an effect. Like, everything has an effect. But... It... It gets rid of... It will, it will stop certain things, but create other things... So we'll get rid of some opportunities that have been around for a long time, like jobs that are being done will be replaced. But in the same way, the jobs that, like in this country, that the locals don't want to do, perhaps, that are being done by visitors, and those locals don't want those visitors here, perhaps, according to the newspapers, then if robots are doing those jobs the visitors won't need to come here because there'll be no need, there'll be no reason so then I guess everyone will be happy I suppose when I mean, you think about it delivery drivers that's going to be a thing in the past I personally got I got no issue with delivery drivers. I try and learn the names now. It's a new hobby I've got. So if I've got a delivery coming and the name is Mahala Balabala or something like just quite difficult for me, I try and say it to him or her. 
Which is your man, to be fair. I'll try and say it. And... I've had two female delivery drivers, I think, in ten years. <laughs> so, yeah, it's definitely seems to be a male-dominated sport. Yeah. Although there was a lady, she's, she delivered my Amazon groceries. This was about a month ago, maybe longer. And I had to... They have a thing. So they used to have a code. Now they do it with a date of birth just to prove who you are. And, and occasionally they do that. And they asked me my date of birth. And she said, wait a minute. I remember it. And she... And she actually gave it. She wrote it down. She said it out loud. It's whatever my date of birth is. It's like, what? She said, yeah, I've got a photographic memory. It's like, really? Because she'd, she'd seen me, I think, two weeks earlier. And you know what? That's the most interested I think I've been in a female for a long time. At that point, it was like, oh, there was something intriguing about it, not about it, about her rather, but about the situation, the idea of being able to remember everything, which isn't necessarily something that I would like. I'd like my memory in some ways to be a little bit better than it is. And in other ways, to be worse than it is, you know, depends on the particular topic. It depends on the topic. Yes, it does. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <sighs> How is AI going to change? I mean, I'm. I use ChatGPT because the way I see it is, I can't can't ignore it I'm still at an age where I'm kind of still active in a, in a kind of a way you know I'm not if I was in my 90s then I probably wouldn't bother the same way I know people like my nan the internet she had no interest in the internet never bothered with the internet at all because, I mean, literally she was like late 80s when it kind of became popular in the UK. So she's got no interest in it, which is fair enough. It's, well, it's, it's fair enough for anyone that's got no interest. But on the same side, my friend, I know someone that was young, younger than me, and he never had any interest in the internet. And it really held him back. And it was it's kind of weird because I got him... Gotten some broad. I got them on the internet. Got the broadband on downstairs and sorted that out. And I gave him. I got him. Was it a tablet or he? I thought he did. Maybe he just done it on his phone. And he started using Facebook, and he hadn't used Facebook for a long time. Like he was on there every now and then, but he just didn't use it. So he kind of like delved into Facebook to, this was probably, I don't know, five years ago, six years ago, it's hard to keep track. And it's definitely over a year ago, that's for sure. And he was saying to me, oh look, um, he was reading stuff, you know those really, really dumb things that people post, where at the end they say, uh, pl please send this uh, please send this past this or forward this on onto your own timeline or to friends I know I know those people that will and those people that won't you know that kind of just oh a little bit tr I've got a little bit troubled by those kinds of posts they're just um, emotionally manipulative I mean, the first time I saw those, it used to annoy me. Now, I, I, they don't, you don't see them that often. 
But he was really like, yeah, I reckon some people do ignore it. And I said, no, just ignore it. Like, no, no, it's just, it's just said, yeah, if you don't, like, no. It's just bollards. It's just a load of bollards. He said, what? I said, bollards. So he said, why are you saying bollards? I said, because I'm doing my podcast and I don't want to say bollocks. He said, oh, okay, fair enough. But you just did say bollocks. I said, I oh, know, I realised that. And I kind of ruined it, didn't I? He said, yeah, you did. Why would you say such a word? I said, well, I didn't mean to. I mean, to be fair, he said, wait a minute, I know what you're going to say. I said, what? He said, you don't normally swear, do you, on your podcast? I said, no, I don't. It's true. He said, why not? Why don't you? I said, well, I'm not really a huge swearer in life. I mean, I do swear. I do say naughty words sometimes and sometimes for comedy effect. I'll say the you know, I'll say the wrong thing on purpose. But generally not that much of a swearer. You, do you ever meet people that just literally constantly swearing? I tell you who's the worst swearer ever. Who's that Canadian um psychologist? It's very controversial. Let me have a look. Can can it's not it's Canada psychologist Oh yeah, Jordan Peterson. He's one of the worst swearers and by that I don't mean he swears a lot. He just is really bad at swearing. He uses a word and he thinks he's being controversial by using this really strong word. And it's almost like, I don't know if he thinks he's being tough. I don't know. But he uses the word bloody. It's a bloody, bloody. And that's not even really a swear word in this country. It is if you're like two years old, but it's not. It, but the way he says it, and it's just so out of context when he says it it sounds silly it, it does sound like a little child trying to trying to swear but not I mean I remember um, this little kid years ago said to me Jason I said well she said you're a twat I said okay then a couple of about 10-15 seconds later Jason I said yes what's a twat like, just she was calling me names. Didn't even know what the names were, what they meant. Uh, I think the AI is going to be interesting. Self-driven cars, good for people like me that don't drive. And can you imagine getting into a taxi driver and not having to talk? Not a taxi driver. You don't get inside the taxi driver, do you? Unless it's a particularly good ride. And so you get into a taxi, don't have to say anything to anyone. Don't have to talk to them. Don't have to listen to them. Oh. It would be it would be quite nice, wouldn't it? I think it'd be weird though, because they're gonna have taxis and they're gonna have cars actually that don't even have steering wheels. Like at the moment, I think you have steering wheels so you can take control if you want. But eventually, the the complete autonomous ones won't have steering wheels. Which I think, even for me, would seem weird. Because it gets rid of the illusion that you're in control. I think that's going to be the biggest obstacle for humans, is to relinquish control. It's, yeah, that doesn't... I mean, I don't, I don't really enjoy being in a car with someone else driving. 
because I'm not in control. Being on a bus isn't so bad because it's such a huge object that apart from a lorry or another bus is quite a safe vehicle to be in. If I was in a lorry, I'd probably feel fairly safe as well because they're huge vehicles. On a train, a train is kind of, it's both ways for the same reason. It's almost like, well, I feel in control and out of control. I mean, you got a, you got a, uh, what's his name, a train driver, and all they can do is, and they can't steer, can they? Because it's on a track, so it's stuck to a track. But that's part of the reason you can't, it's if there's something coming your way, you can't avoid it because you can't, I mean, it's not Fraggle Rock, you can't just quickly start making tracks so the train goes in a different direction. Although that would be handy. Yeah. You know, I've been in two taxi crashes. Did you know that? One was on a motorway, or well, quite a busy road, but it wasn't bad, it just, it just pulled up and the uh, the uh, the two blokes were arguing with each other. Another one, a taxi that just pulled out without a signalling, and uh, I said, "Well, I said I'm I'm just going to walk." He said, "But I need you as a witness." I said, "No." Nah. <laughs> it's like I ain't got time for this. I'm not going to stick around for ages. And it was, I mean, I don't know whose fault it was. You'd think it would be the fault of the person that didn't indicate, really. Although, to be fair, what I've noticed around here is, I don't know if it's, if it's like that everywhere, you don't have to indicate anymore, is that right? The amount of people don't indicate when they turn right or left around here is, it just amazes me, because I thought that would be so installed in your natural physical ality, your nervous system to automatically put the indicator on when you're about to turn right or left but it's not apparently I thought it would be it's just it's weird uh, what have we got Pride of Britain is on TV so and it's I don't think it's to do with sexuality that one Funny Feet Sarah Hartland has revealed she is writing a sitcom inspired by her strictly experience and wants pal Miranda Hart and dance pro Vito Coppola to star the actress known for playing best pal and joke shop manager Stevie Sutton in BBC series Miranda insists she is lining the pair up for cameos. Okay, cool. What is this? Jason Beatty. Johnson rat rants a bit thick. This week Boris Johnson unleashed an incomprehensible rant about the obesity crisis. Okay, he's clearly didn't look in the mirror today. Uh, the former PM somehow blamed the Church of England for kids not getting enough exercise. He said when he was a child, we were all allowed out playing in the street the whole time. You don't see that with kids any nowadays. Oh, you do if you hang around parks. But, of course, that would be weird. Um, you don't have to follow his argument, mainly because it's utterly nonsensical. But if Johnson wants to know why so many children are overweight, he may want to consider that... What is this? Under the... Oh, it's a political thing. We had kids overweight at school. 
not everyone was slim at school when I was a kid. And we didn't have computer games really, especially in junior school. No computer games, three channels on a TV, up to about 1980s for the first 10 years of my life. Three channels. The only really time I wanted to watch TV was Saturday morning and after school for an hour or so. Maybe in the evening. But on Saturdays, afternoons, Sundays, there was practically nothing going on, so we'd be playing out if we could. We're in the garden. Always has to be blamed, isn't there? Have you noticed that? Blame, blame, blame. It's your fault, it's your fault, it's your fault. Why? Of course, some people are. Oh, look at this. I turned 50 and parted with Angela Rayner, then flirted with a superstar. This is Star Van Outen. Oh, okay. Star Van Outen about in 2024. But it's not Outen, it's Outen, I think. Johnny Vaughan. Hands on deck. D. I tell you what. So, I don't know if anyone knows... Anyone knows um, Van Uten? Van Uten. Denise Van Uten. I didn't realise she was so young, to be fair. I, used to, I watched her on a big breakfast, early 90s. I just figured she was older than me. Because I was young. But she's not. I know that she didn't look older, but she was an adult. But she couldn't have been. I mean, if I was 22. And she was on Big Breakfast. And she was five years younger than me. She must have been... Let's figure this one out together. 22. 17. Really? That doesn't make sense. How can she be... No, not five years. Four years, isn't it? So she was 18. Because she started off being the weather person and she'd be in a helicopter telling us the weather. Because The Big Breakfast was this TV show that was quite anarchic, I think is the correct word. They are the cornerstone acting the deterrent to the bad guys. What is this? The old police. The chop shop. The chop shop, is that what they call it? Oh yeah, because I'm not cop shop, chop shop. Nearly 600 police stations got rid of in 10 years. Really? No. 115 police stations in 10 years. Wow. Why? No, sh shoplifting sores, so it's... I wish the newspapers would make their mind up because they said, oh, you can shoplift now. There was an advert, I remember, um, last year, maybe early this year, and it was, it was there advertising it. You can shop, it was on the news. You can pretty much, as long as it doesn't come to up to a certain amount of money, I think a couple of hundred or 250 quid, you pretty much just take what you want. Staff don't do anything. They even let, let us know which supermarkets allowed it. And then they seem to have backtracked. And I see people getting arrested. It's like, well, make your mind up. Don't don't tell us we can do it if we can't. Uh, I remember I was in there. I was like just walking out and the security guard said, excuse me. I said, you're excused. <laughs> and we laughed. He said, uh, where are you going with that stuff? I said, well, do you mean right now or eventually? I said, what do you mean? I said, well, eventually I'm going home, but right now I need to go to the vets to just pick up um, a leaflet from there, and then I'm going to head off possibly to McDonald's. I might even pop in to B&M, because I'm thinking of getting some Christmas lights for the bush outside where I live. 
he said, well, what kind of what kind of bush is it? I said, well, it's just a normal bush, you know, not big, but it's just it pretty much divides the pavement from the bit of grass that is in front of the block of flats I live in. He said, okay. He said, what what kind of what kind of uh, lights are they going to be? Because how will they like stick? And I, I said, oh, that's a good point. So I did this when I first moved in in 2015. And I wrapped lights, outside lights, around, and they just all fell off. He said, yeah, I can imagine they would, especially with the wind and everything, and maybe people pulling on them. Yeah, I know, I don't know why anyone would do that. He said, I know, I imagine it's fun. Yeah, probably, especially when you're little and that. It's just, yeah, just destroying things. And he said, well, what are you going to do this year then? I said, well... I've learned from my mistake and I've decided that I'm going to get there's a new thing which is almost like um, like a cover that goes over the it's, it's netting so it's not like you know you've still got air getting into the branches and everything but it's a cover that goes over the entire bush and the lights are attached to the cover so you can have all the lights and maybe tinsel or whatever and it just you know you can't see that it's netting though because it's very kind of see through I guess he said oh that's a good idea I said yeah he said what about the tree I said what do you mean he said the tree outside that your friend um, grew I said how do you know about that he said everyone knows about that do they yeah it's famous He, he planted the tree years and years and years ago what about 10 years ago god blimey 12 years ago or something and it's now nearly as tall as the building I said yeah I know and he used to run out to stop the was it the council workers from chopping it down when they were doing the, the bushes I said yeah blimey I didn't know people knew about it he said yeah yeah everyone knows a constant conversation I said cool so yeah uh, then I'll be going home well after you've got the Christmas lights well I, said, I don't know if I'm going to get the Christmas lights yet but then I'll yeah uh, I, I'm thinking I might have to go back and get them because obviously I'm carrying all these things he said, well, that's, I can make that easier for you. He said, how come? I said, what, you mean, going to give me a lift? He said, no, you can leave that stuff here because it's not yours. And uh, that way you'll be able to carry the other stuff. And I thought about it and I thought, well, that's nice of you. Nice of you to try and help. But I think you're just, you know, it, it took quite a lot of effort to write a list pick out what I wanted to take and then just to walk out without paying for it and now you want me just to drop it on the floor he said I don't necessarily want you to drop it on the floor my back's a bit uh, a bit iffy these days rather you like put it onto one of the counters or maybe onto the till so we can just sort out where it needs to go back I said okay fair enough but I want to go home he said we all want to go home don't we but it's not your stuff, is it, really? I said, but it is. It's, isn't it? Um, ownership is um, eight, eight, eight seconds of, of the law or whatever. Nine, eight, tenth, ten ninths of the law. And he said, what are you talking about? I said, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. He said, just if you put the stuff down and... Uh, we're just going for a walk and just going to the back and going to the office have a little chat I said we've already had a chat he said come on we just uh, I just need to make a phone call I said why don't you use your phone then you've got a mobile phone on you you've also got a walkie talkie on you why don't in fact, well, you've even got a phone because there's this like reception bit where the security like they've got their own little area inside of the supermarket and there, there's a phone there as well connected 
He said, I know, but I thought it might be less embarrassing for you if we called the police when you was in the back rather than, you know, being here. I said, why do you want to call the police? Well, what's happened? He said, really? I said, yeah, are you, are you okay? Are you? He said, yeah, I'm fine. It's you that's got to worry. I said, tell me about it. There's so many things going on. He said, like what? I said, well, didn't really want to go into it, but had a few financial issues lately and trying to sort it out and just don't know where to start. He said, well, if, if you tried step change, I said, what's that? He said, well, it's a, like a finance company. It's a charity, but they help you to sort out your finances. They, they give you advice. They don't tell you what to do. They just, they, and you don't have to take their advice, but they try and figure a way that you can then have enough to live on like financially and do whatever you know guide you in the direction you need to go i said okay step change that sounds familiar he said yeah you used it before i did he said yeah about 2013 or 2014 or 2012 i don't know something like that i said how do you know that he said oh i was I just remember. I said, this is weird. How do you know so much about me? He said, because I am you. <laughs> da, da, da. And then all the, all the walls fell down from the supermarket. And I realized I was in a big television studio. And it was a prank. And it was like, oh... Jeremy Beadle turns up, which is weird, and you'd know why it's weird if you live in this country, why he, it'd be weird that he turned up, and he was saying, you've been framed, or as he used to speak, you've been framed, oh, very strange, but I am thinking of getting the, what's it, that I don't want to say blanket or cover. I mean, it is a cover, isn't it? A bush cover. It just sounds weird to say bush cover. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm going to get a cover for me bush. And it seems like a really good idea. But it needs to be done on the cheap. And also want to put some lights on the tree. Again, it needs to be done on the real cheap, like really cheap. Cheap, 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 cheap. So I need to figure out how to do that. Because it's it'll be outside. <clears throat> so I'm guess it would need to be battery operated. And also I mean I do have I do have a ladder so I could probably wrap it around and try and get some outside tinsel I don't know if tinsel is different from outside but for me it's yeah just something I quite like to do one of the neighbours has already put a bauble on there just to kind of yeah for my friend downstairs kind of to say hello I don't know it's a uh, that was the whole point of doing the tree, just for him. Because it's his tree, and he's not here this year to see it. And I just thought it'd be nice to do something. And it wasn't just my idea. Some other people have thought about it as well. Because he loved that tree. Yeah. There's a lot of noise downstairs. It's one of those days today where it is... It's kind of, hmm, I don't know. Happy birthday to my friend Noel as well. It's his birthday. Um, it's a bit damp. It's one of those, it's a little bit damp. Just, it feels a bit damp. I know it's raining a little bit, but it just feels like in the air's a bit, ooh. 
you know, a bit, hmm, yeah. So what other stories is there? Torval and Dean, will dancing on ice keep going, even we don't know yet, and that's dazzling duo pair have skated for 50 years Torval and Dean they're not not done too bad you know they won the Golden Olympics in 1984 and to still be around doing well still be around earning money on television is pretty amazing I would say when I was 14, 14 when they won the Olymp... Well, no, I was 13, just about to turn 14. Lady Gaga broke her nose whilst sneezing, no, whilst moshing to Franz Ferdinand. Okay, that was a bit rude. They didn't... I can't believe they put that in a newspaper. Unless, of course, moshing isn't what I think it is. Bands Bob Hardy revealed the unexpected moment on Joe Wiley's Radio 2 show. Bob declares, My niece is now 16, and I'm suddenly called to her because I told her that Lady Gaga broke her nose in a mosh pit. At our, a mosh pit? That's where people bang into each other and stuff, isn't it? I never understood that. I understand it if it's... 10 year olds doing it because that's kind of that rough and tumble 10 year olds maybe would want to sort of do that but adults no I don't do really I've never I've seen it on TV I think I have seen it in reality as well I think I've seen it at the, at the, the front of um, rock concerts and well like live gigs not rock concerts like in pubs and venues and stuff and I just don't don't get it I don't don't I just not one little bit do I get it I don't know so she was moshing having a good old mosh what are we having a look at here no more people pleasing Ariane Day Ariana says she learnt a lot from the role I think what is that all about? Where? Is it, I'm trying to see. No more people pleasing. So why? where is she people pleasing? I'm straight to toot my own trumpet sometimes. Oh, I th maybe it's the next one. It may be Charlie that's, uh, that's weird, but it's not even, oh, okay, the bit, the writing bits are the right, the next page. Ariana Grande cast a spell on us in Wicked, and she stares playing Glinda in the movie, has left a mark on her too. She tells me, whoever me is, Playing the iconic witch in the big screen adaption of the stage musical has taught her to stop being a people pleaser as she opens up about how the role has changed her. <sighs> Reflecting on what the part has taught her, Ariana says, Coming into the role, I think I would doubt myself and maybe even have been a bit of a people pleaser. Glinda, in a good way, is so sure of herself. She's taught me... <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, I can't even read that. Oh. What age is this aimed at? I mean... It... I can understand... Uh, uh. Uh, 
I, I, I can't read it. Clinda, in a good way, is so sure of herself. She's taught me that it's okay to have boundaries and stop trying to people please. When I think of all that she's taught me, it actually makes me a little emotional. Although famous for top 10 hits such as Love Me Harder, Think You Next, Thank You Next and Call Me Angel, Ariana started out as a stage on stage as an actor appearing in Broadway musical 13 at just 15. What? There's a musical called 13. Still in her teens, she found fame as Cat Valentine in the Nickelodeon TV series Victorious. And she says it was a joy to put her music aside and escape real life by getting back to her roots. Ariana says, What I've really missed about acting is the opportunity to be someone else. When I'm writing music, it's an extension of me. I'm writing about my own pain, my own trauma, my own experiences. But when I'm acting, I get to take this character on that's nothing to do with me. Of course, I try to bring my own ex- <laughs> I try I try to bring my own experience to the, to life, but yeah, that's what I've really missed. Wicked is the first of a two-part adaption. See, I, I want to watch that because I thought it's one of those things that I remember the books were out and I never read them, but The Wizard of Oz was one of my favourite movies ever growing up. And people used to moan, it's on every year. Yeah, I'm glad it's on every year, back when I was a kid. Cynthia is a misunderstood witch. Cynthia's... What? Wicked is the first of a two-part adaption of the stage musical starring Ariana, Cynthia Erivo, Jonathan Bailey... Michelle Yeo and Jeff Goldbum. Goldbum. Cynthia's Ella Ferber is a misunderstood witch because of her green skin, while Glinda is a popular girl. They become friends at Shiz University in the Land of Oz, but their bond is tested after they cross paths with Oz's wonderful wizard. And with hits such as Popular and Defying Gravity, Ariana has still been able to showcase her amazing vocals in the film. And bosses at Universal Pictures will be singing too. Really? They've joined in? Fans flock into cinemas, helped it rake in 14 million in the UK and Ireland on its release, making it a top grossing opening. Weekend of 2024. So she sings. Uh, what did she say earlier? It was a joy to put her music aside and escape real life by getting back to her roots. But she sings in it. It's not really... Okay. I, I want to watch it. I'm, I think I could be quite good. Jesse J... Okay. Jesse Jesse J made seven point six million last year, despite releasing no music. That's not bad, is it? Good on her. I I like Jesse J. I liked her before she was famous. How would you know her before she was famous? <laughs> no, she had a YouTube channel, and she was doing her price tag. B -b 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 price tag and stuff on the New York Underground and it was yeah she was on YouTube for I don't know how long for and then she released her song which was a big hit and loved the album to hold it I listen to it still now and then yeah Here's a weird one here. 
prisoners really, as inmates can take a long, relaxing stretch. That's the headlines. Prisoners really are enjoying a cushy time, taking turns on a vibrating massage chair. Is that just the men's prisons or the female prisons or both? Which one? Which one would have the longest queue? Drones to crush motorbike morons. As Towie Star, Towie Star, and New Love on moment they met. What? He says she's like Julia Roberts and Claudia Schiffer rolled into one. And someone says, what do you mean old? No. Um, Nicole on him, Arge, she said, when I saw him, it was like Moses parted the Red Sea. Was that a euphemism? I don't know. Top 10 singles this year, this, this week. The Good, the Bad and the Ugly, Eloise, This Old Heart of Mine, 1968. Really? Along the... Oh, right, 19... <laughs> oh, blimey. I thought, some of these songs, are they re-releases? E Eric Clapton, Jimi Hendrix. Okay, 1968. 1st of December, 1968. The Good, the Bad and the Ugly. do 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 Wee 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 deal 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 wee 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 deal 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 wee 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 deal deal I am a tiger Lulu blimey so awesome grandfather Yeah. Oh, should we do my star signs? Let's me do my star signs. Let's have a look at the star signs. Where is it? Where is it? Where are the star signs, my baby? The star signs, the star signs. I won't read all the star signs. In fact, shall I read all of them? Yeah. So then you can know what yours is as well. So that you can direct your whole world around what some random stranger makes up in a newspaper probably done by AI ooh what is this oh, ok right that's all the TV things oh come on I just want the star signs oh there it is here we go right so let's go here if you're Aries it says I'm not going to say what dates the, the Aries is because you're going to know if you're Aries or not, aren't you? Can you believe anyone where you say, oh, what star sign are you? I don't know. How would you not know? Blimey. Aries, you might find it a bit challenging to see eye to eye with a relative or business partner. If you don't stand up for yourself, this tension could escalate. Keep away from people who are only or overly talkative, so keep away from me. Taurus, your energy and determination will ensure you do a great job at any task. Some people will wonder how you managed it, but once you've set a goal in sight, you might, you, you will keep going until the job is finished. Do a good job. Um... What's the next one I'm going to blow over? Gemini. Stay calm and practical and you'll find ways to move forward. Someone will make some creative suggestions but do consider how feasible they are. You'll know what will work and what might fail. Ooh. Uh, so, Cancer, if you notice the efforts someone is making to please you, Show them the same consideration. Learn their likes and dislikes. If you sense you are approaching something in the wrong way, change your tactics. Okay, Leo. Life is busy and you are starting to realise you've had your fill of socialising. Volunteer 
efforts and group activities. You will feel much happier spending time within your own four walls with your family. Virgo, me. You're reluctant to share your thoughts in a group as you have had negative feedback before. Let go of past experiences and focus on the present. Your views could make a difference to someone's life. I've got no idea what accent that was. Um, Libra. You will hope for a reconciliation after a disagreement with a friend or a partner. Often you leave it to others to lead out of fear of getting hurt and sometimes people are happy with this arrangement. Again, another accent, I'm not sure. Okay, let's try. Okay, Scorpio. Your careful attitude. Finny, do you have to make so much noise? Scorpio. Your careful attitude towards money will lead to a more secure future. Opportunities are on the horizon which will offer a solid base on which to shape your future. This is a chance to reassess your priorities. Sagittarius You've let many troubles overwhelm you by looking at ways to simplify your financial situation. You will feel less anxious. It's easy to miss details when things become overly complicated. Capricorn You tend to take down-to-earth approach to most aspects of life. It will be rather annoying that those around you keep changing their opinions. You wonder why someone is being so stubborn. Aquarius Don't underestimate the influence you have on others. You might wish someone would stop being so lazy and start taking action. Sometimes all it takes is a gentle push to motivate people. And Pisces You will regret it if you allow others to make your mind up for you. Take time to think things over. You need a clear idea of what will work for you. Or once you have decided on this, don't be afraid to speak up. Cool. There's a lot of noise downstairs. Did you hear all that banging? I do apologise. Right. That's it for me. So thank you for listening. I'm going to go. I'm going to have a cup of tea. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye. Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way. Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here. Not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace. But also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of 
relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice. Maybe in a few hours time. Perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly. Especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It was, a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was person's voice relaxed me, just felt so peaceful and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found Being able to just let go, to have that trust 
in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back, some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do which you may not realize by listening is when I record these recordings now for example I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing, I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though they're may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. And when it comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In 
in fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally you breathe so very easily and smoothly. my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed I tend to 
visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers. Producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just take in some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. Completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever. in this moment. Completely free. Noticing that your mind has slowed down slowed down.
because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly but surely the muscles in your legs The feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepen in each part of your body, further and deeper. In the feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings in your wrists,
muscles in the front of your body. Also, feeling peaceful. a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. slow your stomach Peaceful in your stomach. Your back. Notice how relaxed you now feel.
spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed. Your knees, relax. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. Tips of your toes to your eyes. Your fingers all the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go. Just wandering away. Happy 
to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil. Your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even Enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety.
letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy.
not have noticed. Your mind drifting. Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace. Total peace. Letting go. body
body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and you give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive healing energy, which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort.
comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind, almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together, almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness. And it feels nice. It really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply. And those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside, so there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even 
more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing. Focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Relaxed and loose and calm. And now the back of your neck, focus in on the back of your neck, letting go any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back, down to your lower back. As you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. The top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently 
gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. This spreads into your hips, so down your lower back into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and even though we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine, Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already Feeling really loose. They're already feeling calm. And that feeling. Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. Feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. healing you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders which sends that deep healing message 
message. Into your arms. And you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed so deeply relaxed so forearms and your wrists feeling so heavy yet at the same time so light and gin Focus in. a sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar
fingertips. to the front of your body muscles in your thighs your knees Muscles and your shins completely
Letting go of everything. So I'm going to start counting down now. From 20 down to 1. You can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
pain. Fourteen. Thirteen.
eight. Six.
as you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down, and you may find do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now focus in on your eyes going to begin counting down from 10 down to 1 right now
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like you 
were counting down from 10 to 1, what do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? You could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, as you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs, just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed with every number that I count down. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. And just notice how how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily even about counting down from ten to one. It's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening, the 
gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Now, ten, nine, eight, seven. How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps we give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. sound really weird but I think that all of our body parts especially our thighs need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you gratitude for what our thighs do for us and I know this may sound a bit strange maybe you think why am I surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something or It's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. If you move down to your knees, again, such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily... I'll speak for myself here. I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a, maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason, it's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees... Regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe notice that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now on the bottoms of your legs, the shins, 
and your calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating, of course, your ankles. So important. You know, anyone that's had even a, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted. And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know, logically, our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms, which is okay. Doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up. But our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles, then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance. Helps you to get around and be mobile. And it's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. I was like, okay. If I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course, that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins there to protect your lower legs shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet We're not going to focus on your feet. We're just going to focus on the legs. And I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. It's that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body, can be very sensitive. 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. And you could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. Of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease your legs, it's almost it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. That fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips. Imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue. You can of course feel the the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing the same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are because our legs are so precious as in all the other parts of our body they're more precious than any jewel on the planet And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having the love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, massage the muscles in your bones, and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles. The strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs, yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. Truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, still a lot of weight, these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone, double that, yet my ankles support my body all the time, although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down, as in fact my whole legs do, my feet they also go whew, and my toes clap they're so happy your legs And I know that talking about talking about your legs is probably possibly the one of the most the most boring things you've ever heard anyone say. Possibly, but boring or not, everything I said is true. Your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect, but they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. really can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know a very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that journey of comfort. 
folks. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. It's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling calmer not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax, and a more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. You know, maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end, the deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each 
each muscle in your body. and just observing the sensation of letting go completely This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. slow and peaceful six Two. slowed right down sink in deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice that there are 
with some thoughts still there. Maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. You just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. as you focus on those remaining thoughts as we count down this time from seven down to one with each number just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love kindness gratitude over those thoughts which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply with every number those thoughts will become more with number seven.
changing now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands and your fingers, There's nothing needed to be done, there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that. It's just noticing and focusing. Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands
starting with number eight. Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worry and overthinking and anxiety. take that away, which is what we do, what we do now, you're left with a 
real sense of peacefulness which comes to you very quickly because ultimately it's just a feeling a feeling of comfort it's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. A place where you can feel relaxed in your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to please anybody else, ever. A place where you can actually not just love yourself, but in some ways, more importantly, you can like yourself yourself, appreciate who you are, and that sense of gratitude is in the air all around you, also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. Healing energy soaking into your body. spreads through your veins, traveling to each and every single part of your body. And you start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing, relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day. As your health improves, not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to, because something has changed deep within you. Maybe 
things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to <laughs> stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. The more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright, it's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. very, very easy to let go because that's all it is it's just deciding to let go and when you press 
press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive, only a positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you that continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, it just feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. Each and every day, moving forward. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower, it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. Negativity will disappear. And 
that you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm, all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry, doesn't, it doesn't, des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here, negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. nice, doesn't it, to just let go of everything, and I'm going to count down now from 20 down to 1. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty.
is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. Give yourself permission to take a break from everything. And you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected, you expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. focus increases which actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs and 
massage your body all of the muscles all of the fat all of everything every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy and then your brain Filled with that healing energy. The feeling of comfort, of relaxation, increases. starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed and it may start what's needed so if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation that's what you'll get if what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts that's also by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me you give permission for your body and your mind in fact you give the command to your body and your mind to relax Drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, focusing on a different part of your body and you may find yourself drifting but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting you get your alert again to my voice focusing different part of your body starts to relax even deeper because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone and the more you drift the longer you drift sleep and that's the last you remember 
Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers. a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands and mouth, many of them seem to just melt into one. your right hand start and your left hand end. Almost as if they just mix together. Now focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. on your elbows, focusing in on both of your elbows, just observing the feeling of your elbows.
entire body feels. Noticing how the mind feels now. go letting go letting go letting go letting going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head. Not pressing, but just holding them there very gently. Maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face. Just so you can feel my hands. So you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently 
gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realize that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands. Now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. And this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow the knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders. Moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And may 
maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table just to give you a little bit of a stretch but very gently so you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders the sides and the back again this is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure quite a bit of uh, needing if if you wish to really release the tension really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there and you can feel really nice sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly it can all be beneficial to the relaxation of the muscles in your shoulders. Now as we move down your arms, we'll do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. do is I'll just lift your arm up just hold it to the side of you I want it to still be attached and I'll just massage the tops of your arms all the way down to your forearms into your wrists gently massaging that part the softer part which is the under part of the arm leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside, it's much more sensitive skin, sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. your right hand just holding your hand in both of my hands just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly same time pressing down and massaging each finger and then starting to massage the palms of your hand just turning the hand gently stretching it gently and actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes even if it is with a stranger 
someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe and as I put that right arm back down where it was and you do the same with your left arm exactly the same Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. Just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back. The biggest part of your body. Starting at the top. Starting again where you would have been area at the top and between your shoulders and then your neck going back massaging that area again but this time moving downwards making a downward stroke to the middle of your back side inwards, so massaging the, your back, but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. that connects your front to your back. And just massaging down firmly but gently as firm as you want. Moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again very gentle and yet firm as you choose and eventually you get to the spine you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back do that a few times so 
sometimes we can use the knuckle or the you know two fingers and just go either side of the spine almost just push down go all the way down to the bottom of the spine each time releasing tension and opening up the body stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated now I'm going to move to one side to your right side From the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, you're going to massage that area of your back. I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end, that side, all the way to my side, to the middle, in fact, to where your spine is massaging that side of your spine the opposite side to where I'm standing it's almost like kneading bread there's that big area which is firm yet lots there to massage potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged it releases so much from your body that's not useful starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread it's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice and then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is pressing and kneading firm and gentle at the same time because it feels so releasing this mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, we'll move further up to the top of your body and then we'll do the same. This time starting with your upper back, put my hands 
forward over and mess it massage in that area up to your spine from the side of your body up to your spine so some of that massage area with muscle tissue uh, or whatever fatty tissue even will be possibly from your chest so it's all connected the chest from the back connect together I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back, doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine in your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. That's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint. Very sensitive, gentle area. Working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose, using both hands, the fingers digging deep. of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit moving to the right foot massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet gently but 
firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having a feet massage to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel, and you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently, massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting with the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I'll spend more time on one particular area. As you move down muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, moving from down your ankle and into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience while having your feet massaged, feel it really Turn over and unwind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again with your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As you move up, I can clean my hands, make them all fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently. Starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. As 
just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, chin. moving down from your neck down to your chest starting by massaging the very top of your chest where the collarbone is either side of the collarbone Just massaging the whole of your chest. Moving your chest around. I feel there's quite a large area. As you can move from one side to the next. where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process, moving up over your chest, Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, to feel really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, or just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. And we're going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently massaging from one side to the next moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your 
belly button. And then move round to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply. free there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of so now massage your stomach front of your stomach, making circles around the belly button, and going the other way around, there's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. So now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles, massaging them. And I can do this two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. Gently massaging the knees, sliding down your shins, put the pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot and with each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, the heel, the ankle, the toes. Massaging every part of your feet. Feels so good just to let go. Enjoy the process. Enjoy. comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin, and you can just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoying feeling of deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy. going to 
do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. that candle in front of you and I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out just this is not a big it's just a gentle and that candle will extinguish and then I'll say the next number as we move down and you can just blow that one out as well yourself feeling more and more relaxed if you need to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle to blow out candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed more and more sounds where you are, you be aware of those sounds for the moment, and you may start to just not even notice them. they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds there's a forest the pigeons I'd like 
likes to say hello sometimes. And as the odd plane goes by, it could be traffic and trains in the distance. But none of that seems important whatsoever. So simple. Now we're going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a Activity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Starting. Eight. 
aussi.
ici.
let go of all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. It's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, and you give the say so, you can say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. body just follows. It's all like, like a breath of relief. Oh, okay. I feel like I'm going to relax. That feeling at the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past where you get home and you just sit down in a chair. Maybe you kick your shoes off and that, oh, feels so nice, knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least, and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two, and it feels blissful, and just by sitting there like that, your body knows it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you. Because it's a mindset. And your mind feel prepared to let go of everything. And to just completely allow all the stress of your body to evaporate and any tension 
emotions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in your body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax and see more and more stable in. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world. almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of the clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you can see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you would use to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As a sense of relaxation becomes stronger, listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again and then it's just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when you're stressed and tense we not may not actually be aware of what we need, what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely, and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, feels so nice. 
just breathing out any excess feeling of tension or stress in every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things have come to a standstill be just much, much slower than before, because your mind is not really needed in listening to my voice, which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. Synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know when feeling completely calm, loose, and relaxed. benefits for your body, your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair in your hair glistens. this healing relaxation and as you focus on the inside of your scalp right now as you start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain they're not even necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling your brain with deep, concentrated
increasing sensation of comfort with a spreading throughout your body. Relaxing each and every muscle of your body. scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension just accepting observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in this
this moment. So let's start off by focusing on the hands. Just be aware of the hands. I'd like you to move your hands around. now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. And then turning your ankles, moving your feet around, making your turn. Focusing now on your eyes, I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids, maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes, the muscle changes. raising your eyebrows, it stretches the tops of your eyes, perhaps squinting your eyes, scrunching up your eyes, just so you can really get in touch with all aspects. Focusing on your thighs. And I would just ask you to gently tense your thighs. Just very, very gently. Just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs. And noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, and to lead to your shoulders, and as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards, as if you were looking up.
sensations as you breathe, sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of your ears, the parts of your biceps and your triceps and your between your elbow and your shoulders. As you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, and then I'd like you just tensely, but very, very gently and slowly, as you're not straining or putting any whatsoever on your arms, it's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment, and you're just noticing above your forehead, and if you were able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly, if that's a difficult thing to do, then maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, even your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how your lower
and up against the, the tip of the mat, laying down gently against the bottom of the mat. Always very slowly and very, very gently. sensations in you have come from experiencing in your wrists perhaps a warm pillow in your hands one pillow down again include the sides of the body, which those muscles are very much connected. As those muscles also move into your hip area, connecting to your buttocks.
starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching, it's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day to day life, it's a slower movement. energy very slow. 
more movements which make up the larger movements which is always the case and when you move your hand it might seem like it's one movement but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other and what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just Oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm. I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. Just starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings your body small physical sensations on your legs whether pleasurable or not and maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, and just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral, just feelings. Just noticing what your body is telling you. The feelings in your arms. Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the, all the internal parts of your arms, the veins, being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation forearm and your right arm. Your right forearm may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. It may not feel like anything other than 
just a feeling like it's there. It's a feeling in your shoulders. Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. It's almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. Or still not. And when you focus on your left shoulder, and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, like you tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. Your lower back. side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. Of course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. Sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, and I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently, just stretched a little bit even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. along that feel in your chest just noticing what sensations you Experiencing in your chest right now. And there's so much of the chest. Obviously, there's the collarbone leading to your chest, got the chest bone, you've got the muscles chest. Of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, I might not act different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest. But at the side and underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back, as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves.
comes into your back. And just being aware of your chest. feeling there is in your chest. And I notice that I focus on my chest. I feel it in my my back, my upper back. I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I breathe in. In. And then it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. And that feels... It feels okay. little bit of pain in my right chest, a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly, I don't know, I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason, that's probably part of my upper back that connection between my shoulders and my upper back so I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back moving the shoulders backwards or up which then moves the I think it's the scapulas Feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, and you do tense a muscle, and you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes to do that at any point doing it if there's a um, an issue with a per part of your body you need to be gentle with yourself at all times in and out of seeing people and simply noticing yourself as you notice your mind how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording Peace.
peaceful as your mind right now. There's nothing to think about. And just my voice to listen to. Because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least. For your mind to slow body continues to relax. Because that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect to happen. body maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to as if you're moving further away from the body and the mind, just leaving that there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, a movie, a space movie, you know, and that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe, free, and continue. 
physical sensation. Most likely it's a magnet outside of your head sucking the tension and the stress and all the annoying feelings that you don't like. Sucking it out through your skull. is something that you can do yourself on your own mind. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes, close your eyes, just
seen how you physically feel. Have you had bouts of painful pain? Can you swear to attention to leave from your fingertips and your toes? And as you focus on your fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly. This time, you begin to feel relief, tension, and stress, and the anxiety that you might have. Breathing through your stomach. Just breathing through your stomach, almost as if it's just releasing. that your stomach is just being relaxed as you breathe a painful painful pain painful Thank you. 
you to make up your mind for the bad news. I want to explore the fact that it feels like the last day. It sounds like the last day. I'm not forcing myself, but giving myself It is a command, though, isn't it? Or a feeling like it. Um, this is going to be a bit fun, but I need to tell myself I'm okay. I don't know how to say that sounds like you know relax, relax. Um, um, I need to be gentle. I think you know some words don't really have the same. Test it out. I have a little test, a few little tests that I can do. And I think that will give you an idea of thoughts. I just think thoughts are pretty good. Um, I like to sense my thoughts as well as sense how my body and my mind might fit in. Focusing your thoughts. Your thoughts in your head, and just tell your hand to relax. If you say relax as you focus on your breath, you could say, my hand is relaxed. Or I've got my hands relaxed. And I think if you actually do it directly, by focusing Imagining that your hand can be pulled at any point in time by the little breeze. So pull 
you can see your hand at the same way. on your arms and how your arms are doing at the same time. If you say in the same way or not, and find the right time and way. Now I might say where. For you, you might say where or yeah. You know, you, you might say it differently to your friend. start focusing on things and you make sure you know that you've got a bit of work to do, a bit of effort you know, put a bit of thought into your tent or wherever you are you know, at this time and if you ever get that idea that you just want to go on a journey of attention to the inner aware you know, like a, you know, what you're focused on Focus on the 